beautiful light bodies and star seeds. I'm Dr. Beverly. Welcome to the Dancing Bear Enlightenment Academy channel, the holistic spiritual transformation podcast. Today we will talk about the water element. As you know, I've been doing a series on the five elements. And after well, almost four years of doing podcasts, I missed a week. It was an accident. So if you looked for this, this week, Monday, oops, I forgot. Uh, I thought I'd already done it and uploaded it. And I just realized when I went to do next week's that I hadn't done this week's. So we will do this week's podcast on water, which we skipped. So of all the elements, which one do you think turns out to be pretty important? I'd say water. Water is a universal solvent. What do you do when you hurt yourself? You run water on it, right? Or you put it in your mouth, which is liquid, lots of water in your saliva. So water is very, very healing, not just physically, but emotionally. It's an emotional healer. And a lot of the studying I've done, I've heard things like 80% of all illnesses have an emotional component. I disagree. I think it's more like 100%. Why did you get in an accident? You weren't paying attention. You were distracted. You didn't feel good. You were tired. You drank too much. You had too many drugs, whatever. Why did you have too many drugs? Why did you drink too much? Why were you distracted? Emotional, right? So I would say pretty much our whole life is affected by our emotions. How do you manifest? You put your emotions into what you want to see. Emotions are critical. And whenever you study anything, I don't care what it is, astrology, numerology, anything, they always tell you there's an upside and a downside to everything, even colors. There's an upside and a downside to different colors. Everything is yin and yang. And when it's in balance, they're, they're, one is not stronger than the other. They help each other. They support each other. Yin creates yang, yang creates yin. It's a cycle. So are we ever going to be perfect? No. Why would you want perfect? What is perfect? Who decides what perfect is? There's no such thing as perfect. There is, are you in balance or not? And when you're out of balance, that's when you get sick. What causes you to be out of balance? The biggest thing is emotions. What causes your emotions to be out of balance? Mindset, your attitude, what you're thinking. Are you thinking, oh, I'm great. I love the phrase, I'm healthy, wealthy, and wise. I say that all day long. I'm healthy, wealthy, and wise. What do you say all day long? Now, sometimes I go, oh, money brought me home. Or, or I go, uh, I have several different mantras. I won't say them all. But sometimes I have mantras going in my head. And so what's going on in your head? Do you know? Are you going, oh, no, they did this at the Olympic. Who watches the Olympics? I started, stopped watching them decades ago. I don't even own a TV. I don't watch TV. I don't listen to the news. Although I did hear Paris had a, a blackout except for this wonderful, beautiful cathedral. That's nice. It's not nice they had a blackout, but it's nice that the cathedral was lit up and it sort of shined through the whole city as a contrast to the crap images that I saw people posting about the, you know what, I shouldn't, shouldn't talk. I might get a strike. <laughs> uh, so you know what I'm talking about. You can figure it out. So water is very, very important. And of course, I'm always talking about meditation because, you know, I've had five near death experiences. I was dying literally not figuratively, literally dying, came close to death, going in and out of the emergency room in anaphylactic shock, um, rescued off a mountain by helicopter, rescued off Angel Island by a ranger boat. I mean, I was in bad shape. I had to carry a huge purse full of medication. 
which wasn't healing me, but it kept me alive until I could get to the emergency room. Until I learned to meditate. That's why I'm so big on people. Meditate, meditate, meditate. What does meditate do? You start to notice your thoughts. Oh boy, why am I thinking like that? Why am I putting myself down? Why am I hating on whatever you're hating on? Love everything, even the dark. I know, that's weird. Why would you love the dark? Because it balances the light. And you're not perfect. <laughs> Have the dark within you. Uh-oh, did I just bust your bubble? You thought you were perfect? No, none of us are perfect. But the light can balance out the dark and we have free will so we can choose the light. So you get angry and you go, I choose to express the anger in a positive way. Okay, you just infringed on my boundaries. We're going to stop. And you deal with it in a mature adult way. Rather than blowing up and explore, I saw a video today of a woman who got mad because the airline lost her reservation. She tore the whole place apart and broke all of the screens. I mean, that's really stupid because now she's going to go to jail and she has a big bill to pay and she's going to have to go to the courts and pay for that. So what you choose to do with your anger is up to you. So what's the next thing? The attitude when you meditate? Now you start changing your mind. Now all of a sudden, you have more positive feelings. What happens when you have more positive feelings? Well, you feel grateful. What happens when you feel grateful? You have more love. What happens when you have more love, especially love of yourself? You heal or you don't get sick. I almost never get sick. When I do, it's only for a few hours and then it goes away. And that happens about once every five years. <laughs> I had a doctor tell me your immunity kind of wanes after a while. So you need to get sick again to rebuild your immunity. So that's probably why about every five years I, I come down with a fever or something. I go to bed for a couple of hours and I get up and I'm fine again. Okay, that's it. That's how often I get sick and what it's like. <laughs> Just it's okay. I don't feel good for a while. But like I said, I have a little chicken broth. I go to bed right out the alternating chills and fever, and then it goes away. Um, what do most people do? They take some kind of over-the-counter drug, which does not heal you, and it counteracts the symptoms. The fever is your body healing itself. That is not the disease. You want the fever. Don't break it. Unless well, it goes up to 102 or higher, you, yeah, you risk convulsions and brain damage. So... If you're spiking, it means your immune system isn't able to control itself. But once your immune system knows how to work, it does. And that's the importance of water. Now, a lot of people say, well, I use bottled water. Well, the bottled water probably comes in a plastic bottle. And the more flexible the plastic bottle, the more toxic it is. So you're drinking toxic water, even if it says it's fresh spring water. So I have a filter on my house. So I take filtered water, I distill it. So now I have distilled water. So it doesn't have any of the crap. It doesn't have other people's medications in it. It doesn't, it's pure, clean, clear water. And I put it in dark blue bottles and I make Ho'oponopono water. I put it in the windowsill so it gets full sun. Now, supposedly you only need an hour in a full sun. But I leave it there a couple of days. I let it get really, really charged by the sun. And that's what I drink. So for me, water is very, very important. And it will help keep you well. It will help keep you or prevent illness. And if you, what's his name? Dr. Miraso Emoto. I have, I have my slides on the other computer. <laughs> I don't remember names very well. So Dr. Miraso Emoto. His research into water, water remembers everything and it structures itself. So the whole time I'm working with my water, I'm sending it love. I'm setting it affirmations. I'm telling it wonderful things. I'm telling it how much I love it, how much I need it. I'm putting all that love and energy into my water. And it will help you heal. It will help you heal your family, your loved ones. Water is very important. 
So if you don't have time to buy a distiller, I don't recommend buying distilled water because why? It comes in plastic bottles. You need to only buy things that come in glass. Get rid of the plastic. It's full of all kinds of toxins, even food wrapped in plastic. Get rid of it. Now, if it's dry food, it's not so bad because it's not le leaching into the food. But if it's any kind of wet food or liquid, all of that plastic, the phthalates, the BPA, BHT, whatever chemicals they made that plastic with is all going to leach into the liquids, especially when they're heated. So when shippers ship water, do they ship it in air-conditioned ship uh, trucks? No. They get hot. They, it can get several hundred degrees in the back of a truck. And when you walk over to the grocery store, a lot of times you'll see pallets. I live in Arizona. They sell a lot of water here. You'll see pallets of water in plastic bottles piled up in the front of the store. Granted, they're usually in the shade, but it's hot in the shade, even in the shade in Arizona. It's still over 100 degrees. Um, when it's 120 in the sun, it's still 100 in the shade. So all of those toxins in the plastic are leaching into the water. So be mindful of your water. And what's the kind of meditation you do to help with water element healing? So if you look at your astrology, if you have strong placements in a water element, and what's water? Let's see, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces. Those are water elements. So if your sun, moon, or ascendant is in one of those three signs, especially if you have more than one of those in a water element sign, you need to be very mindful of water. So in traditional Chinese medicine, TCM, water is the kidneys and the urinary bladder. That's the yin is the kidneys, the yang is the bladder. So how do you know when you have kidney issues? One thing you can do is look under the eyes. Do you have a black line that goes all the way across under your eyes? That's kidneys. Or um, when you look at actors, I'm sure you've seen actors and they have these big bulbous bags under their eyes, huge sticking out. That's kidneys. You can look at them and go, oh, they've got kidney issues. That's water. So take care of your kidneys. A tiny bit of salt, like uh, sea salt, Himalayan salt. There's some quality salts out there. You don't want table salt. But a little bit of salt in your water first thing in the morning sort of gets your body going. It nourishes the kidneys. You don't need a lot, you know, maybe a quarter of a teaspoon in a bottle of water. And uh, just sort of jumpstart your kidneys and your stomach because your stomach likes warm. So that's why so many people, I think, like coffee in the morning. Coffee is really bad for you. It's full of toxins, even the organic. And when you heat it, it just pulls all the toxins right out into the coffee. Um, so warm water, first thing in the morning, warms your tummy, gets your bowels moving, keeps you from being constipated. And you put a little bit of salt in it to nourish your kidneys. So that's my talk this week. So if you go back one, two, three, four weeks, I think it was, end of June was the fire element. Then I interviewed a dear friend of mine, Dr. April. Then the next week we did um, the earth element. Then we did the TCM metal element, which in Ayurvedic and other um, um modalities it's called um air and this week we did water which i skipped so by the time you're seeing it it's next week <laughs> and then the following week i'll wrap it up with the fifth element which in tcm they call it wood but everywhere else it's called aether and we'll talk about why did they remove aether from the western consciousness What's going on there? 
I'll just leave you with that for this week. So thank you for joining me. And if you would be a sweetheart, I would really appreciate it if you could hit subscribe and like, because it really helps the algorithm algorithms, <laughs> algorithm, algorithms on YouTube so that more people will find the talks. Thank you for joining us. And remember to be the light you want to see in the world.